What is up guys, Yoda the Wise here, back at you again. Uh, let's catch up on things. There's been quite a few. Um, for starters, our little invasion from ROC, well they're gone. They flew the coop right before the, uh, you know, finals started. They just decided that it just wasn't good for them. And the fun fact is, is that they uh, kind of blamed their lower um, guild members for not supporting them in their fight against us. So there's that. We're back to rolling the server, everything's good. Now, let's reel it back into why this video is actually being created. We all, at this point, have act, all have access to Castian. I call it Castian, Castion, Castitan, however you want to pronounce it, Expedition, all right? Cassetan. It's new. We have n no, literally no information on how this works. Classic Ark of War to the T. We have no clue. It's all up to us to figure it out. And if it wasn't for, you know, myself and a few other people who dedicate their, you know, YouTube channels to Ark of War, we'd still be trying to figure this shit out. So, nonetheless, we're gonna kinda go over this and, you know, some strategy with it. So let's dive in. So, here we are. Castian, 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 however you wanna pronounce it, expedition. All we're given is that we have several servers or planets, however you want to refer to them, against each other. In a total of four. Four planets. We're gonna stick with planets here. So it's my planet versus three other planets. Our goal is get to the middle and rule this over like we would our planet in terms of taking over every capital and the center capital, Ascentican, which in this part, is just another capital. We have several different things that we have to go through to get there, and it's been quite cryptic in how we get there, but all the information you need is in the Road of Expedition, all right? So we've kind of figured out at this point that, you know, as we progress through these, uh, this Road of Expedition, that's how we're getting to closer closer to the middle of this map now before up until a couple days ago you could get somebody crossing over a border into as long as it's been your own part of the map set a member call and somebody could jump into that section of the map and in terms of that we're talking you know if you were to take and go into the level two capital area while you're crossing over like a lower part that in terms of border to get to point A to point B. Set a member call, boom. Now you have people in the second part of that capital. Same thing going into trying to cross over into level three and into Sentikin or the center of the map. They patched it. You can't do that no more. It was a very good observation by somebody who figured that out but it took them this long to f for Ark of War to patch it after they've been testing this out on you know select servers uh, I find that interesting in itself but you cannot now you can't move forward until the expedition allows you to do it and by that there was an expedition that you know allowed you to take over this fort or the border which is ruled by our sister guild, WTF. And the reason for that is, yes, it is a guild versus guild competition. It's also a server versus server or planet versus planet. The problem with this is that we're finding is that, yes, we have sister guilds. We have our lower ranked players that have been with us for a very long time. And they want their cut of the pie. And as you see on my map, even though WTF holds this border over there it still shows green for me um and i'm an roi roi um the thing with this is 
that's where the planet versus planet comes into. You have to play this like a chess game. It's basically Ark of Wars version of chess. All right. You still need to rely on other guilds on your planet, which is very hard when there's a lot of bad blood. Where, fortunately for us, the largest guilds on our planet are pretty much everybody that's a part of our crew. We do have a few uh, within those top five that don't really, f you know, they they have their own struggles and they don't like us. It's fine. You know, it's nothing like we're a dictator or anything like that. It's just people who like to fight the power. Which is fine. And it is what it is. It's, what this, this, it's a war game. With this, though, we do have to rely on the other guilds who are of our planet. Because as we progress, the next one, which is pretty soon here, is going to allow us to take over the border wall so we can get into that level 3 capital. That's where it gets interesting. Because up until now... It's only been essentially our planet. So we've had our little section down in the bottom quadrant or the south quadrant of this map. On the east side and the west side was, you know, we pretty much had a quadrant of this map. When we get to the level three capital, now we're going to be in competition with the, the west side planet. And whatever superpower that's going to be, at this point it looks like it's 187. Let's be honest here. I've looked at the individual rankings. If we play this right, we as ROI shouldn't have a problem. But it's still a game of chess. We have to utilize every piece that we have to basically take control of this server. This is basically a new server. This is a server of servers. At the same time, we're the powerhouse. I've looked at the individual stats. We are the bigger guild. We are larger arc sizes. There's one other guild on this map that could cause us problems, but we're not worried about it. That also lies into the fact of how we play the game. Okay, because now we have to do this as a group. If you've noticed as well on the guild chat, all right, that disappears if you walk away for a few minutes. Just like you would in, in Galactic Battle. Which is, I get it. It makes sense. The reason for it makes it harder to communicate. Because this whole thing, like I said, is a chess, a chess game. How can you communicate with your guild when it's disappearing every time you walk away? So that's why it's very important to have, you know, the Line app or the Discord or, you know, whatever other outside ch WeChat that you have in order to keep in communication with your guild okay this is what we're doing this is our plan this is how we're going to get from point A to point B all right it's very strategic and this game is all about strategy um, something else that we I've, I've noticed too on this if we go back to the map These are your Imperial Expeditionary Forces. Okay, right now we've only seen a level 1. And it takes 20, even though this one shows 19. That means someone's atta attacked it in the, in the last couple minutes or so. It takes 20 times to kill one of these. And that is one of the tasks within the exp uh, road, to, uh, road of Expedition. Uh, not hard. It's very easy. I mean, even the level 22 to 25 monsters are fairly easy compared to... A level 9, 10, or even an 8 when it comes to a special event. The monsters aren't that difficult. The greatest part about these monsters and why I would you know, encourage anybody to at least try is the fact that you can get over 400k in free gold from attacking these monsters. But because of the patch that occurred, you're going to have to be more patient in trying to get to the center, which only has 24, 25 on level one we'll say cap one is level one cap two is level two level three level four is the center on level one you got your 22 uh 21 22 on on level two you have more 22s and 23s level three is going to have 23s and 24s when you get the sentient that's when you get level 25 just like in a monster on the map 
which is traditionally 1 through 20, you can't attack a higher monster without getting the one before it. So you can't attack, attack a level 25 without going through 22, 23, 24. Keep that in mind as you're going through and jumping. Um, but once again, you can't you can't do the member call anymore. All right, just so you have an idea, we're spread across the map. That's because we were we spread out before it happened. Um, when it comes down to this is this has kind of been a problem with our guild at this point is that we do have our lower, um, you know, people who you know don't spend money on the game are a little more casual with it. They don't try as hard. That's why they're in our you know sister guild, and those that you know really want to be in our rankings are the ones that show. Okay, look, I'm ready to be a part of it. Those who aren't, you know, it's it's a constant thing. It's kind of like you know line line one line two line three or uh, whichever way in terms of a um, sport that you can think of to where they have you know this is our top player second players third players this is how we rotate accordingly and with that there has been a lot of discontent in it because a lot of these exponential requests the tech it's very gilded okay and the ruler thing this is where this comes into play you really if you really want the newer gears you have to take that stab and say look our guild is the powerhouse guild we're gonna take over as many as we can we love your support and it's gonna help you in the long run but you need to help us help you because you're not going to really, probably not for a while, be able to get these newer um, gears without these points. L luckily, you know, it only takes 20 of the ruler medals to get it, but those aren't going to be given out until later. You know, we still, we still have some time before these ruler medals get laid out. And this is where it comes down to... Yes, it's server versus server, but to some extent, it's still guild versus guild. And if you're a top guild, you, you really have to play your your cards right in terms of positioning so that if you do have a sister guild that you really want to help out in their own way, that's fine. At the end of the day, you still have to look at, okay, well, everybody that's in my guild, you know, we, we try very hard and we spend the money. So let's get us to where we want to be. What's going to be the most beneficial to us? And domination reward is the one that we want. And unfortunately, that does mean that anybody who's in a lower guild has to understand it's you got to let it happen. Otherwise, it's going to turn into a civil war. And that's not what you want, because if you don't have those uh, guilds under you fighting with you, it'll be very hard to stay in control of the server as a whole and by that I mean you have to strategically look at all this and say okay how do I maneuver our sister guild so that way our focus is probably only the center of this while they focus elsewhere because you can't attack a capital without having your fort right next to it and that's another strategic thing you want to move forward that guild fort has to move with you Don't know, don't know how else to put it, but if you don't if you don't move that guild fort with you, you can't attack anything, and that comes down to everything. You need the guild fort right here next to the border, which is going to tell you only members of a planet who've occupied a border before can uh, control center can pass through the border, which is you know it is what it is. The wording's terrible. Essentially, when it finally opens up, which at some point it will after Capital Two. Uh, task completes we'll be able to move on to the border can't attack it unless your guild fort is there next thing too is something that's kind of important is is this this tech tree it gets bigger as we go and something to focus on too is you know what first of all when it was small we were thinking oh you know what why don't we just figure 
you know, gathering. Gathering should be a big deal. Honestly, that's not the biggest deal. You want to focus on the medical capacity, the medical bay. How do you make it bigger? There's there's two two in there in that tech tree that increase medical. Why? Because if you're a top guild, guess what? Your biggest fight is gonna be in the middle. Trying to take dominance, dominion. And you can't do that without loss. And this isn't like Galactic Campaign where everything you lose, it just takes time to heal. No. Everything that gets killed is sub subjective to how much space you have in your med bay, for one. And two, it's going to take resources or the paralooper to fix them. Now, there is a nice little quirk to this, which is, if you've been paying attention, is in the... Um, Abyss Exploration. Now this one I I recommend everybody do every day. Put the gold into it. Alright? The larger that capacity is, the better. Because at this point, I'm at level 6. I'm going to take 50% of everything that comes back is automatically going to be healed. Alright? So say I send 20,000 Yeti out and they all die. When they return, automatically 10,000 of those Yeti are going to be healed. I only have to worry about 10,000 Yeti to either use metacrystals on or resources. That's a big deal, especially when you get into the larger, okay? I, for one, never thought I'd get there, and that's another thing that we uh, have been saying in terms of one day I'll get there. I have. I've gotten the T12. T12 is very expensive to heal. Very expensive to heal. I have airship. It's even more expensive to heal. This is going to save you in terms of how much resources you have to use to heal those uh, troops. I don't know what level it goes to. That's something new. We'll figure that out as we go. But I do know so far is that it starts out at 40%. I'm at level 6. I'm at 50%. So hopefully it grows a little more every level to where it gets to a point to where it heals the majority of your troops as long as you have that abyss exploration energy in it all right that's why i i say it's very it's very lucrative to do that extra exploration every day uh it resets for you know to do one click for free and then it goes up to about uh 2k in terms of gold to up to six times and it, it grows in gold. It doesn't start out at 2K. It just it, it escalates. And I highly recommend it because every time that you do the exploration, it does add to what's in that uh, capacity. All right. This is going to be a game changer. It's going to save you a lot of resources. I'm telling you. That pretty much sums it up for this uh, Castian uh, exploration or expedition. It's really just a fight to get to the middle in terms of dominance. At some point, you can probably go and try to dominate, you know, the north, the south, the east, or the west uh, in some capacity in terms of trying to uh, maintain that ruler dominance. But as you see here, we can't even go into the second capital and try to take it over for another 20 hours. And this is what I mean by it's going to be dictated by these expeditions. Once you get to the final expedition, that's where everything's going to be finally open. And you're going to be able to just kind of wreak havoc and try to maintain your dominance. And that pretty much sums it up. I don't, I don't, I don't think there's really anything else to talk about um, other than your own individual point ranking. I'm not unsatisfied with where I am I just choose to not try so hard and a lot of the people who are on the top rankings here is due to uh, PvP a lot of it is PvP you get a lot of points from that so keep that in mind all in all you have bigger so let's look at this real quick you have a higher monster up to a level 25 chimera your resources go up to a level 20, which is going to be in the center. All right, each level has its you know cap in terms of uh, resource tiles. It does take a lot longer in terms of getting them, but at the same time, 
the eight hours I've spent on a level 17 is the same six hours I've spent on a level 15. And that is a huge difference in resources compared. Which even now, you can consider these resources as if they were on gold tiles or shiny tiles, however you want to refer to them. They are <coughs> beefed. All right. That's 6 million for a level 17, when it's normally only about 1.2 million for level 15. So, this is a very good way for smaller arcs to grow quicker because the as long as you stay on that level 1 capital, you shouldn't have any real competition in terms of as long as you keep it civil with the people from your planet. Um, us bigger arcs, you know, yes, it's a very lucrative um, system for, in terms of our needs as everything is more expensive, but at the same time, our goal is up here versus maybe somebody who's still trying to get to T9 or T10, which is fine. Everyone's at their own level. We're all trying to get there. This is going to help everybody in their own way. And I kind of like it. I kind I like it. I like the idea. It does kind of throw a wrench in terms of dominating a planet. Because now it's not only just being a power of that planet. It's now telling everybody within your planet. To, hey, let's work together. Let's try to get this functioning. So we all walk away with something. So that, that, that does it decided to make a video on this one hope everyone gets something from it if you have any questions drop them in the comments if you have any suggestions or something i left out drop it in the comments let me know good seeing you till next time